Mom, can we watch a movie tonight? Sure, if you don't fail your math test next time. But mom, it wasn't my fault. It was the teacher. Mrs. Bentley fails me for no reason. That's not true. I hate math. Come on, get in the car while I pack the trunk. While I pack the trunk. Let me go. Mom! Mom! Get away from him. Police? You're under arrest. Arrest? For what? What is this about? For the murder of your wife and kidnap of your son. Murder? Cheryl? It was a quiet Sunday morning when the BIIPD received a call from some locals about a murder and kidnap in plain sight. 27-year-old Cheryl Williams and her six-year-old son Alvin. The BIIPD immediately got to the scene, but Cheryl couldn't make it. Her last words, Alvin. Checking the mall security footage, BIIPD spotted a strange man suspiciously roaming the parking lot of Riverdale Mall. Although the identity of the man was untraceable, police soon got a strong lead. It could have been none other than Cheryl's ex-husband, Alvin's father, Gordon Reeves. After an abusive relationship and a cold divorce, and a cold divorce, Cheryl had been awarded full custody of Alvin. But Gordon couldn't accept that. For almost a year, he had been battling for Alvin's custody. It was you. You took her life. And you know where Alvin is. This is ridiculous. What evidence do you have? You can't just bring me here and charge me. We have footage. Impossible. I was at home the entire day. We might have had our problems, but I would never take her life. She was my wife, the mother of my child. Of course she was. That's why she attempted to get a restraining order against you. That has nothing to do with us. And instead of interrogating me and coercing me into a false confession, if you went after the actual culprit, perhaps you would find my son. You can act all you want, Mr. Reeves, but you won't get out of this one. After carefully examining the footage, BIIPD attempted to locate the red pickup. However, it turned out the vehicle had illegally been on the road with no license plate. There was no way to track the vehicle 
other than alerting locals to report any sightings. You can hide the kid, but where will he hide the truck? He can lie all he wants, we'll find him. Gordon felt devastated. On one hand, he was dealing with the loss of his wife. He didn't know where his son was. And on the other, he was being harassed by the police. Fortunately, being able to make a call, Gordon informed his mother, and she was able to bail him out. How can you charge my son and bring him here without any evidence? Your son may have no fault in your eyes, but in the court of law, he is a prime suspect. This is all that woman's fault. She was irresponsible. And now look what has happened. My grandson, who knows where he is, how he is, and you cops are here harassing his father. Our crew is on the search. We're trying our best, Mrs. Reeves. I'll sue you. I'll sue the whole department if anything happens to my grandson. You try anything, it won't be good for you. Phew. What are you doing here? That man brought me here. What? I want to go to my dad. Don't worry, kid. We'll get you home. After an extensive search, late that night, BIIPD got a call from a gas station on the outskirts of town. Alvin had been found. Dad! Alvin, thank goodness you're all right. Told you. It wasn't me. Alvin, did you see the man's face? How did he look? I don't know him, Dad. He had bushy eyebrows, a beard, and a mustache. He was really scary. With Alvin back... With Alvin back... BIIPD took all charges off Gordon. As it couldn't have been him, Gordon had been at the police department while the boy was with the kidnapper. Sir, we were able to locate the truck. Where? It was abandoned in the woods far out of town. It was picked up from a junkyard, had next to no mileage on it. We spoke to the workers there. 
They said they had never seen the man around before. Didn't seem like a local. Then who was that man? Officer Harding looked at the profile of the stranger. He couldn't make sense of this case. Can you zoom in on that picture? Do you recognize him? He... He looks a little familiar. But after staring at the picture for a while, Gordon was silent. No, I don't. With a heavy heart, Gordon returned with Alvin. With Cheryl no more, he was granted permission to take Alvin's custody. But that night, Gordon didn't go home. He went straight to his mother's place. Grandma! My little champ, Grandma was so worried for you. Gordon watched Alvin and his mother. She took so much care of him. Grandma, is mom okay? Mom is in a better place now. When will I see her again? Alvin, I think that's enough chit chat. You must be exhausted. Grandma, man was so scary. His, his voice was so weird. It was like he was trying to be Batman. Did you... Did you get a look at his face? Not really, Grandma. That man broke my glasses. I was seeing all blurry. I could just make out he was wearing a cap. But he did have this weird-looking mustache and beard. But you know something, Grandma? He stopped right at the same gas station on the way to BII Funland. Remember the one we went to? It was like I could have walked home from there. You were very lucky, Alvin. Grandma was worried sick. Let's hope whatever happened today never happens again. Never happens again. Sitting down Alvin with some games, she went into the kitchen to get dinner ready. Gordon, what happened, son? Why, Mom? Why what? It was you. Tanya. She was a possessive mother, and she loved Gordon. She could do anything for him. And deep down inside, she expected the same from her son. And for the longest time, it seemed she had a special preference in Gordon's life. But everything changed after Gordon met Cheryl. For the first time, it seemed Gordon was overlooking her, ignoring her, and most of all, not listening to her. Gordon was in love, but Tanya was burning in rage and jealousy. She tried her everything to get Gordon to leave Cheryl, but nothing worked, and eventually they got married. And after the marriage, Things were going fine, but it didn't last long. When Gordon and Cheryl had their son, Tanya had softened a bit, growing an attachment to Alvin, seeing her Gordon and him. But Cheryl, knowing Tanya, wasn't a good influence, always tried to keep Alvin away from her. And Tanya too took her revenge by poisoning Gordon about Cheryl. Eventually, Tanya was successful in breaking up the marriage. 
but what she didn't expect was losing Alvin to Cheryl. When a year passed in which Gordon couldn't get Alvin's custody, Tanya became desperate. She had to do something. And as long as Cheryl was alive, she would always be an obstacle for her son. So she put on a disguise and planned to rid Cheryl from their lives and bring back her grandson. Tanya knew Alvin has always had problems with his vision. And for now, that was a good thing because she couldn't risk anyone recognizing her. She intentionally dropped the boy's glasses on the parking lot. Taking her grandson, Tanya intentionally drove him out to a gas station where she let him escape. She was worried sick, waiting for Alvin to make his way home, but she knew she taught him well. He was a smart boy. Alvin, if you ever get lost, what do you do? Go to the nearest store or shop and make a call, or find someone who can help me. Good. Keep this with you. It's a lucky quarter. It might come in handy. Okay, Grandma. Little did she expect anyone would ever know her secret, but perhaps Gordon knew his mother better than anyone. I, I don't know what you're talking about, son. Don't lie, mom. I could recognize you any day. Why did you have to take her life? Gordon, for you, my son, for you. That woman ruined your life, made you suffer took your son away from you. I couldn't take it. No, mom. You took my son's mother away from him forever. And now you will be away from us forever. No, Gordon, listen to me. Alvin, let's go. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.